Give me the opportunity to present my research at 35th Asian Association of Open Universities Conference. My name is Kamran Peet and I'm working in Ella Baikon Open University as Assistant Director of IT from past nine and a half years. And I'm also doing my PhD in Remote Sensing and GIS from National University of Science and Technology. And my research area revolves around educational technology, spatial learning analytics, and Moodle. I'm an active member of the Asian Association of Open Universities Conference, and I'm also an individual member of Moodle User Association and ICTE as well. So the topic of my presentation is design and implementation of spatial learning analytics in distance education. As you know, like learning analytics is one of the popular technology and research area in which the researchers are working. Uh, what I would call it, uh, the new thing in it is the spatial component, which is coming from the geographical information and system field. So it will make it spatial learning analytics. So in this research, we will see how we can use spatial learning analytics to improve the quality of education. So my research, backed by the quality of education UN goal number four, which says to ensure inclusive and equitable quality of education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And the statistics, which are backed by SDG4, are very alarming. As we can see, there are more than 22.8 million children who are out of school. And also around 617 million children and adults who lack minimal proficiency in reading and mathematics. Also, if you look at the indicators, in our area of Asia, all of them are very alarming for all of us, so that we need to really need to work on improving the quality of education. So how we can solve this quality problem? This picture is painting like the first one, if you can see, the formal education system is just like a small car. It can only accommodate few persons, few people who can afford, or few facilities that government can afford in both sides. So through this left side, we cannot solve the problem of masses. There comes the need of the conventional or the classical distance education, which are being like many open universities of Asia and all, all around the world, they're working hard to, uh, to improve and to provide the quality of education at the doorstep. But again, the problems in conventional distance education are like efficiency and the slowness. So without using technology, we cannot uh, give the quality of education a minimum time. So the only option left here is the online learning or the learning we can say using technology, or we can say the blended learning using technology. So the distance education, as all of you know, that it is playing a very vital role in promoting education. And my research area or my application of this spatial learning analytics, I have applied this on Alama Ingwal Open University. So Alama Ingwal Open University, as an introduction, as you know, it's one of the Bangalore Open University, having more than 1 billion students in a year. AIO has more than 240,000 teachers, which belong to like all over the country, and it has more than 2,000 courses and more than 50 regional campuses. So there's a lot of spatial component, spatial data, which can be analyzed uh, for improving the quality of education. The study area for this specific research is the province of Punjab. This is the one of the province of uh, one of the highly populated province of Pakistan, and the data is uh, from in out of 20, there were around more than 239,000 students uh, which belong to Punjab region. And this map, you can see the clusters uh, of enrollment in each region of Islamic World University. So the objective of my research was to map the scoring pattern of distance learning students of Punjab province and to see if there is any uh, data, if there is any uh, insight which can uh, give us insight to improve the quality of education. The second objective was to identify the spatial correlation between education and socioeconomic indicators and scoring patterns in each region province of Punjab province. 
So third objective was to apply classical and spatial regression to explain the relationship between these indicators. Coming to the methodology, so initially the data was collected for coding pattern, which was the primary data, and the secondary data included the explanatory variables, included the literacy rate, the socioeconomic variables, and the uh, and the other uh, indicators of uh, those of that province. So data standardization was done. Then the data with geo visualization was uh, applied in different GIS softwares to see the visual patterns among all the uh, regions. In the third step, the spatial autocorrelation and different pattern analysis was analyzed. And in last, it was observed there was an influence scoring patterns and to predict the scoring the scoring model. The variables included in my study were the average assignment marks, which, which I'm calling the scoring student scores, and the independent variables, which are the external variables, uh, which included educational indicators, socioeconomic indicators, COVID indicator, and HDI human development index. Within the educational indicators, it included the literacy rate, the resource persons, the number of workshops, and the retention score. The socioeconomic parameters included a lot of parameters, for example, the primary enrollment, the secondary enrollment, the household access to the water, hospital beds, and it was had it was having a cumulative score, which which was called a Z-score. Also, we included the COVID index derivations, which was uh, conducted by another study. So it was also having a uh, like cumulative data of, of all the provinces, all the districts, which we correlated with the scoring patterns. This is the COVID temporal map, which is based on some other study. Another indicator which was included, it was uh, Human Development Index, and it is, these are the factors uh, which were considered by the UNP for derivation of Human Development Index, which are the standard of learning based on the graphs, national income, and healthy life corresponding to the life expectancy index, and the knowledge according to the years of schooling. Now, coming to the interesting part of the study, uh, which is the result. Now, this you can see different maps which were generated based on the uh, spatial data. This map is showing with the general population, the people of population of in each province, and you can see there is a pattern. There's a visual pattern. You can see that in the middle, in the bottom, and in upside, you can see different patterns of population. Again, if you look at the literacy rate. This is an also a secondary or external data which is published by the government. And you can see there is a pattern in the provinces which belong to the southern part. They have low literacy and the regions which are in the northern side of the Punjab province, they have like high literacy rate. Also, if you look at the past passing percentage, which is like specific information of like business learning students. So again, there is a pattern, but the pattern is quite like opposite. If you can see the southern part, they have like more passing percentage as compared to the northern part. Also, if you look at the scoring pattern of the Punjab province, you can see there is a pattern in the visual. Visually, we can see the southern, belt, the southern part of the province. They have like high average score of assignments average scoring patterns, whereas the regions which belong to the northern side, they have slightly less average score. Also, if you look at the other educational indicators, which are published by some other studies, if you look at the learning score, overall learning score of the Punjab province, again, there is a pattern. If you look at the retention score, again, you can see there is a pattern. And the gender score, again, you can see there is a pattern. Now, let us correlate this pattern with different uh, indicators. Like these maps are showing you the social economy, the COVID cases, energy index, and HDI index. Again, every factor has some pattern in, 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 it, in itself as well. Now, if we do the scatter plot between the average assignment and the duration, you can see there is an inverse or negative correlation between the scoring pattern and the literacy. The literacy rate is increasing, the average score is also 
decreasing. Also, if you like that, if the literacy rate is low, the average assignment score is getting higher. Also, if you look at the retention score and literacy, so there is a direct or positive correlation, high, highly positive correlation between literacy and the retention score. If you look at the average score correlation chart at uh, like 0.05 significant values, again there is uh, there's a positive significant negative relationship between literacy rate and the scoring patterns. Also the classical regression model is showing like uh, the R value with more than like 0.62 and it is uh, giving, we can predict the average score by this model of literacy rate, retention score and resource persons. Now, coming to the conclusion of my study, the result shows that there is a pattern in student score that the first part of my study, like the pattern exists in, in the student score and to see how it is related with other factors like uh, we related, correlated it with literacy rate. So the results show that it's negatively correlated with the literacy rate and the retention scores and human development index and COVID index and also socioeconomic index of that specific region. So what, what was concluded, what, what was observed, so it seems there is an inflated scoring which exists in the region, especially where the literacy rate is low or the retention scale is low. So it was, it was logically expected that the, when the literacy rate is low, the average score should also be low. But in this study, the special patterns or the special analytics uh, gave us like different results. So we can name it as an inflated scoring. So we don't know the reason. So there is a need to further investigate the reasons why the inflated scoring exists, which can ultimately help us to improve the quality of marking or, or, to, or the, improve the quality of scores in uh, the low literacy regions. Or maybe there, there might be some other reasons which needs uh, some further studies. So this was all about my study, which is like designing and implementing the spatial learning analytics in distance education, especially uh, when we have like large number of data, and that data is uh, like belong to different area of geographical aspects. So that makes the GIS or the spatial uh, software more accurate to work, and it is very helpful to visualize such kind of data in our maps and to relate these analytics with different factors to make like more appropriate decisions or to make more precise decisions according to the data. Thank you very much uh, once again for giving me the opportunity. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, email me because I think uh, uh, or if I'm available online, so I can also answer that. Thank you very much.